Hi everybody, once again, I get to share another Good to Know Monday tip with you and I'm excited, but before I do, I want to mention that there have been more than 120 new subscribers join our Good to Know Monday tips group this past week alone, and so I want to say welcome to all of you. And for those of you who don't know, let me mention that you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Marty Braden Living the Dream Coaching, where you can click on my playlist and you will find all my past Good to Know Monday tips there, like the power of the flicker, the two tools for creating better connections with people, the CT Far model for thought management, and many other Good to Know Monday tips. But for today's video tip, I'm going to share with you a few principles about worrying and how it affects where you go in your life. Now, you might be saying to yourself, why are you spending time talking about worrying, coach? What does that have to do with starting and launching a business successfully? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you now. So to begin with, I want you to define what worrying is. The dictionary says worrying is mental distress or agitation resulting from concern, usually about something impending or anticipated. But here's what I say it is. Worrying is where you and I create instant pre-play movies in our head of something that hasn't even happened yet. We all love to watch football instant replays of what just happened, especially if it was an incredible athlete performing some incredible feat on the field. All worrying is, is an instant pre-play of what we think is going to happen. And thinking of it over and over again, and it generates the fruit of these kind of pre-play visuals, such as distress, agitation, grave concern, and even fear of something impending or anticipated, an anticipated event that hasn't even happened yet. In other words, an imagined event that isn't real. Yet we have imagined in our mind to be a negative event instead of a positive event. When we imagine positive events that we think or imagine will happen, it generates happy, exciting, pleasurable feelings in us that we anticipate is going to happen for us. So I call this positive worrying instant pre-playing. I suggest that we stop pre-playing negative anticipated events in our head and replace them with positive instant pre-plays that motivate us. The fact is, more than 85% to 90% of all worrying doesn't happen as we imagine that they will. So why do it? The odds are that even as we do imagine something negatively, it's not going to happen. So let's put the odds on our side and not worry about things that aren't going to happen. Let's create instant preplays of what we want to have happen and never what we don't want to have happen, okay? Here's a principle I believe in wholeheartedly. It's a principle we should all follow when working to start and launch a business of our own. Our references that we gather to form and support our beliefs about something do not have to be accurate in order to become a belief of ours. They can be real or imaginary, accurate or inaccurate. Often our own personal experiences, as certain as we feel about them, can be distorted by our own personal perspective, biases, and prejudices. That's so true. Isn't that interesting? Because we humans are capable of such distortion and invention, the reference legs we use to support our beliefs table are virtually limitless. There's a lot out there we can use. The challenge with this reality, however, is the fact that when we begin to accept them as real, so we no longer question them, they become what I call our story, or I should say our old story. Our old story can and does have very powerful negative consequences, even lies stuff, you know, stuffed in there, depending on the beliefs we've adopted as certain. On the flip side, we also have the ability to use imagined references, or what I'm calling instant preplays, to propel us in the direction of our dreams. In short, we can succeed if we imagine something vividly enough as though it was an actual experience already happening. Our brain simply cannot tell the difference between something we vividly imagined and something we actually experienced. With enough emotional intensity and repetition, our nervous system will accept or see such experiences as real, even if it hasn't occurred yet. In other words, instant pre-plays create references where no real reference exists, and thereby this achieves what some call the impossible. This principle lead to the law of imagination, which says, The ability to create a sense of certainty when there isn't any reference to justify it is imagination. And it's usually what happens behind real genius. By putting oneself on the line in this way, we set in motion a series of events that bring, or should I say, 
that attract the impossible into the portal of our mind where action can then manifest these instant pre-play ideas into the world of the physical. This reminds me of the story of how the four minute mile was broken. It's a fantastic example of this law of imagination and the power of instant pre-play and the principles whose power it releases. For thousands of years, people held the belief that it was impossible for a human to run the mile in less than four minutes. People even once believed doing so would make the lungs explode. But in 1954, the year that I was born, Roger Bannister broke this impossible belief barrier. He got himself to achieve this impossible or impossibility, not merely by physical practice, but by constantly rehearsing the event by pre-playing it over and over again in his mind. I also call this going to the movies. By doing instant pre-playing and not worrying, Roger Bannister broke through the four minute barrier. By pre-playing this achievement over and over again with high emotional intensity, Roger created vivid reference legs that supported his belief table that he could do it. And by doing so, his belief became an unquestioned command to his nervous system. And that produced the impossible results of breaking the four minute mile. Joseph Conrad, who was a famous British writer, said this, quote, Only in men's imagination does every truth find an effective and undeniable existence. Imagination, not invention, is the supreme master of art and of life, end quote. The beauty, so exciting, the beauty of this law of imagination put into practice through positive instant preplays and confirmed by Mr. Bannister was what this breakthrough did for other people. In the whole history of the human race, no one had ever been able to break the four-minute mile. Yet within one year, after Rogers breaking the barrier, 37 other runners also broke it. His belief and resulting action provided dreams like him, and dreamers like him, excuse me, with reference legs, strong enough to create a sense of certainty for them too, allowing them to believe that they could do the impossible too. And a year after that first year, 300 additional runners did the impossible too and broke the four minute barrier. Wow, I'm grateful for these principles that confirm the truth that says, beliefs, which are those things we have certainty about, they have great impact on our fundamental core view of ourselves and what we can do. In other words, on our identity. There's one type of belief that's different from all other levels of belief we have. It's the ultimate filter to our perceptions and controls our imagination. It even controls the consistency of our life's decisions. This type of belief is the belief we have about our own identity, and that allows us to imagine great things from us or limits us to mediocrity. Wow. Our sense of certain, excuse me, certainty about who we are creates the boundaries, limits, and rules within which we allow ourselves to live and think. Remember the story of fleas? They didn't escape an open jar, and that was because they had been conditioned to jump just below the lid. Once the lid was taken off the jar, they jumped just barely below where the lid was so they could avoid hitting that lid. Boom, boom, boom. We're often like those fleas, pre-playing in our imagination the limits we have placed on our minds of what our identity says we can or cannot do. In closing, I want to repeat a statement made by Henry Ford who said, whether, think, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you'd be right. A mentor of mine told me years ago that the person we become in five years from now will be the result of the people we associate with and the books we read. If we hang around thieves long enough, for example, we'll become thieves just like them. My main point for today's tips is that we can choose to manage our own identity by our instant preplays. Let's stop worrying and start imagining achieving the impossible that we all have the capacity to do. It is already in our identity. It just has to be released through the power of our thinking. I want all of you to know that at a core of my coaching is the law of imagination, instant pre-playing, and identity. I care deeply about those principles and include them in my coaching always. I want all that I coach to succeed and be happy in the process of reaching your dreams. How I see you and how I talk to you as your coach comes from the belief of certainty that says, you are absolutely capable of succeeding in your own business, and I will do all I can to help you manifest your dream into the world of the physical, period.
So there you go. Now, before I let you go, let me take just a moment to ask you if you've ever thought about starting your own business or you've already started one and feel a need for a little bit of help, have you ever considered getting a coach? A coach is someone you can trust, someone who's been there and done that. And like I said last week, all of the top business owners I know, as well as most top athletes, have a coach or a mentor. The reason I'm asking is because that's what I do. I coach beginner entrepreneurs just like you and how to start and launch a business successfully. In fact, I'm extremely honored to be your coach, even if it was just for 15 minutes on a phone call with you. If you look in the email that I sent this video on, you'll see a link that says 15-minute overview with Coach B. Go ahead and click on it and set up your free 15-minute coaching call. I think you'll love it. It will help you move to the next level, even though it's just a 15-minute minute quick call. There's absolutely nothing to lose. When you click on it, my calendar will open up so you can set the day and time to chat that can, you know, fit your schedule. It will also allow you uh, to give my, your name and your phone number to me so I can call you for that coaching call. Okay, until next Monday, I just want to say one thing to you. I wish you continued success. Goodbye.